Are you single or in a relationship? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one. You want to get in there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you single or in a relationship? Relationship. Oh. Did you say that? Huh? No, we're not. Y'all aren't together? <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, anyways, let's keep... I ever heard the saying, he's going to cry in the car? This is the saying in real life. He's definitely about to shed some tears on the ride home. Out. Bye bye. Yo, this guy's gonna make you Snapchat famous. Keep going, keep going. I'm gonna be the victim, man. Like, uh -uh. Yeah, you know how it is. Like, you always see these, like, sad ass. You always feel bad for him. Chicks, they say for, like, six months we're in a relationship, and then they say on camera they're not. I, I always feel bad for those guys. It looks like I was one. That's gonna get you some views. That's some real ass shit, and you fing know it, boss. Thank you. All right. I, hey, I needed you more than you ever knew. Mm. That was real. <laughs> that ending part was real. He said, I needed you more than you know it. Damn. You know what this remind me of? I don't know how many of y'all are from Atlanta, but for a point in time, I used to go party in Buckhead. They had the Buckhead bars. One thing about me, I did not like going to black clubs. I always like going to party with white folks. I personally feel as though white folks know how to have fun. Unless I was in New York and I was partying with my Caribbean people where we actually danced. When I came to Atlanta, I realized in the black clubs, everybody's just walking around looking tough and they don't dance no more. In Buckhead, these folks used to get so goddamn drunk that you never knew what to expect. And I've seen countless situations of dudes, white guys specifically, who came to the bars with their girlfriends, and their girlfriends got so drunk to the point where they started doing the most disrespectful things. And when I say disrespectful things, I'll give you a prime example. One time, I was in this bar, it's called Dive Bar, and I'm just sitting down. And it's a chick in there with her boyfriend, and she's drunk as hell. At the time, I had my fitted on. She took my fitted off my head, put it on her head, and she's like, oh, you're cute. Meanwhile, her boyfriend is right there. And the whole time, she's like trying to touch my face and touch me. And like, I'm looking at him, like, pull her hand down. He's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, dude. I'm like, no, you're good, you're good. She kept on pulling her hand down. Then this tried to kiss me in front of this man. I took my hat. And I exited stage left. Well, when me and my people's left and we walking outside, this is where this sh get dangerous. And this is where it can get dangerous. And, and he almost got f***ed up that night. They're walking outside and it had a group of drunk guys outside. She started flirting with the drunk guys while he's trying to pull her away. And then they're like, hey, bro, stop cock blocking, bro. And he's like, bro, this is my girl. He almost got f***ed up. Because her drunk ass did not know how to control herself. I just saw a video of this man saying, he's like, am I the only guy that will never approach a woman? Like, no matter how beautiful she is, no matter, and, and whatever, whatever, I'll never approach a woman. And he's saying that if a woman really wants you, she'll come up to you. Jesus Christ, I come to you now. <laughs> I come to you now, Lord, as humbly as I know how to ask you to please send the flood oh god send the flood now send the flood now it just feels like it feels like every time i get on this app and i let myself watch a video where a man is going to be opening his mouth i end up upset and it's not, it's nobody's fault but mine. It's my fault because I shouldn't have watched the video. I knew when the video started, I said, I'm not going to like what he's about to say. I knew it. And I still sat there and I watched it. I ain't going to lie. Shoot or shoot. <laughs> okay? Shoot or shoot. For every shot you miss, you're going to hit one. But at the same time, man, it's certain guys out here who've been shooting for a long time. And they keep coming up short. As a man, you're supposed to be the hunter. But... I want you to understand something. This is something I'm gonna work on because I plan on working on myself. I was gonna start a new YouTube channel and it was just gonna be about self-improvement. As a man, you're supposed to be the hunter, but if you are able to become the best you that you can possibly be, your hunt will be easier. Instead of having to chase them, you be the best type of bait. And when I say be the best you you can be, and I'm talking, I'm talking about physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, just the best you you can be. I just saw the most insane thing and I had to share. I was just at the gym and I saw a nice cool looking guy 
with a tripod and I was like, oh, let me make sure I'm not in like the back of his shot. I don't mind that he's filming. I just didn't want to be in it. So I was like, well, let me move. Turns out he put his phone on there on the tripod so that during his set, he could have TikToks playing. Okay. He'll, he would like scroll while he was like in between sets. And then for his set, he would just have one TikTok playing. And then sometimes he would be repeating over and over again. Ma'am, ma'am, it sounds like you need to mind your business. I'm just being honest with you now. Different things motivate different people. Maybe those TikToks motivated him to complete his set. Are you kidding? That, is that not the craziest thing? To be fair, sometimes I do that when I brush my teeth or like wash my face and I'm like bent over and I can't change it and it's playing over and over. But at the gym with a tripod fully extended on the ground, just playing TikToks, I'm like, we're cooked. We're done. Pack it up. It's over. We lost. We're done because you can't mind your business. However people decide to get their motivation, let them do them. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying this out loud, but women, if you are in a relationship or dating, remember, there is no 50-50. You shouldn't be paying any bills, not because you can't, but because your man should be treating you like a queen. And I felt like saying that because I'm right in front of the Buckingham Palace in London and I realized that every man should treat his woman like a queen because otherwise there are a million others who are totally ready to do that. So don't settle for anything less than you deserve, ladies. Don't lose a good man because of bad advice. Some young lady out there will see this and will break up with her man. Because at this current time, he's not able to treat her like a queen. Whereas, if she just be patient, I feel as though some of y'all are writing checks that you haven't put in the work to cash. If you want to be treated like a queen, what have you done to add to this man's kingdom? So this video is for my baby daddy and my baby daddy only. If you're not my baby daddy, scroll up. Or as a matter of fact, let's all just stay here and listen to what I got to say. So you see, I get it that I'm really that B. And I know I was nominated by you to play a father role too, trust me. But I just find it funny how every time there's an, a big event coming up, whether it be the start of school, whether it be my son starting something, whether it be, ha whether it be anything that has to do with dough, you go MIA or you find a reason to stay mad at me. But point here, moral to the story is that I got it, big dog. I got it. I just spent 400 bucks, two pairs of shoes for your son, a hat, everything. Everything my baby needs, he has. And he's going to get because of me. So thank you, no thank you. I don't think you should be on the internet talking about your kid's father like that. Sometimes all it takes is a simple conversation. Now, I'm not saying he's innocent. You know, I really don't know y'all's situation. It's always two sides to a story and then there's the truth. So right now we have your side. And honestly, proud of you for being able to provide for your kids and be there for your kids. I would never take that away from you. But I really would like to know the whole story. It's situations where the person complaining might actually be the problem. Again, I'm not saying that's your situation. All I'm saying is I would much rather you communicate with your baby daddy than be complaining to us on the internet. The internet has provided a space where everybody can be the hero in their own story. You know, everybody want to have a, a sob story. Everybody want to have a story of hardship. I know that grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth that'll come on the internet and talk about they came up out the trenches. What trenches? Just like I know chicks who have baby fathers who are willing to take care of their kids, but because of their own bitterness and because they want everybody to see how strong they are, they purposely sabotage the relationships between them and their child's father just so the child's father can just be like, you know what? Fuck you. And then they go on the internet or they go in a group message and tell their homegirls, yo, this ain't shit you know i'm out here i gotta do all this by myself tell them what happened tell them the full story i still know it's a few of y'all that watch these videos religiously that aren't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button go ahead and follow me on instagram and make sure you got the notification bell selected to all that way you can get all the notifications when i upload these videos stop playing with me hit that subscribe button let's get right what is your definition of a high value man question number one question number two what is your definition of a high functioning man? Because I just watched this interview with Cam Newton and Dr. Bryant, I believe. And I'm, I'm, 
I'm dumbfounded. I'm actually... Yo, my wife showed me that interview. I'm not gonna lie, bro. She read Cam for filth. That video had me looking at Cam kind of weird, dog. Even the Nick Cannon joint too, bro, had me looking at Nick Cannon weird too, dog. We dumbfounded. This man has eight kids by three different baby mothers, and he feels like he he's co-parenting and he's being a present dad in their lives and his kids are not lacking anything regardless of the fact that he has multiple kids by multiple baby mothers what i okay uh, let me yeah. let me let me just let me no. let me go back to the question no. high value what he did was created multiple broken families i don't know if that's where she's going but that's where i'm going he created multiple broken families. You versus high functioning. So in Dr. Brian's definition of how a high value person, pretty much a person that can provide a person that has money. Somebody who is high functioning has emotional intelligence, you know, emotional stability, understanding, reasoning, all those things. Cam Newton, you are trying to convince me that as a father of eight kids and three different baby mothers, three different women that you are dealing with emotionally, because regardless if you are still with the mother of your children, you are still in a relationship with the mother of your children, regardless if you guys are together, if you catch my drift. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't get that. But also, not only that, but you are looking for a wife in addition to the, the, the situation that you've created. Not, the, not anything that has been done to you, but the situation that you've created. I don't think we talk about that a lot. We often come down on women that have kids, you know, multiple kids or multiple baby daddies and stuff like that. And, you know, I think that's trash also. But it's dudes out here that have whole football teams with multiple women. And, you know, we don't look down on them. We say shit like Papa was a rolling stone. But really, bro, you you were savage. You were savage. You created multiple broken families. Every day I look at my son, I see how happy he is that he has both his mother and father in the house. Where my wife lacks, I pick up. Where I lack, she pick up. My wife is more nurturing to him. I'm more of the disciplinarian. When he needs a push, I'm the one that pushes him. You know, like, you need that balance. When you have multiple broken families, those kids don't get that balance. 